Hello dear students, this short video will explain about the histological structure and functional anatomy of the ovary, uterus, vagina and the fallopian tube. Welcome, let's learn about the histology of the female reproductive organs. The female sex organs includes the external sex organs like the vulva and the mammary glands, the internal sex organs that is the uterus, uterine tubes, vagina, ovary and the others are the placenta. The surface of the ovary is covered by simple cuboidal epithelium which is also called as the germinal layer. Deep to the epithelium, the ovary is invested by tunica albuginea. The ovary is divided into cortex which contains ovarian follicles and medulla which receives the vessels and nerves at the hilum. So this is a picture of the ovary and the epithelium, germinal epithelium is outlined here at the surface. Then just deep to that you have tunica albuginea covering it. Then you can see the primordial follicles here and then the primary follicles when they increase in size. Then you can see secondary follicles when they develop antal spaces within them. A large secondary follicle which has an oocyte pushed to the corner is called as the graphene follicle. Once it is released, that is, happens during ovulation. Then the uh, ruptured graphene follicle becomes a corpus luteum. And you can see how the corpus luteum is present here. And further the corpus luteum becomes fibrous and it is called as corpus albicans in white in color. So during the course of the menstrual cycle, a group of ovarian follicles, they start maturing under the influence of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. But only one attains maturity while the others degenerate and they are called as atritic follicles at various stages of growth. So every month, one of the ovary will release the ovum and uh, there are many follicles which try to become the graphene follicle but only one of them is successful in becoming a graphene follicle whereas the others will degenerate and uh, they are called as atritic follicles. This is logical picture of, of a graphene follicle. So we can see the other details, um, it contains the ovarian follicles at different sizes of the maturation and degeneration, that is the cortex of the ovary. It may also contain the corpus luteum and the corpus albicans and it's embedded in a dense fibrous stroma. So here we can see again the outer layer which is the simple cuboidal epithelium or the germinal epithelium and then you have the primordial follicles over here. And then a little larger ones are the primary follicles. Then uh, these are these are um, type of the secondary follicle. This is a graphene follicle here. So the cort cortex is the region which contains all the ovarian follicles, whereas medulla is the region which contains blood vessels and uh, lymphatics. The development of the ovarian follicles are in four stages of folliculogenesis. Firstly, primordial follicles, which is primary oocyte with one layer of squamous follicular cells. Primary follicle, oocyte surrounded by glycoprotein layer known as zona pellucida and granulosa follicular cells. Stromal cells form the internal and external theca, which surrounds the follicle. Secondary antral follicle, what happens here is the cavities will start to form and they fuse. They form a large fluid space which is called as antrum folliculi. It's surrounded by granulosa cells. One pole of the follicle to surround the oocyte thickens and it's called as cumulus oophorus. Theca interna becomes more prominent and with granulosa cells it secretes the estrogen hormones. As you can see here, this is the primordial follicle and these are the stromal cells around it. Then you can, you can see that uh, th there is one layer of uh, cells being formed. There is zona pellucida being formed. So the, this is related to the primary follicle, multilaminar primary follicle here. 
then spaces start to appear and these are this is called as the antrum and then it starts filling with the fluid the layers start to separate they are called as theca interna and theca externa and these are the granulosa cells further there will be a large space that is the antrum antral uh, cavity they join together to form a large cavity and um, the oocyte is pushed to a corner uh, it has a zona pellucida around it a, a, a row of cells around it is called as corona radiator it's like radiating and then the attachment to the uh, corner is called as cumulus oophorus the same you can see here this is the primordial follicle with the oocyte and this is a primary follicle with an oocyte it's an enlarged view there are two layers of granulosa cells here this is a graphene follicle so we can see that the, there is an oocyte uh, with the nucleus and uh, uh, this layer uh, of glycoprotein layer is called as zona pellucida and this will be the corona radiator around it this attachment of cells is called as cumulus oophorus and this is the antrum the fourth stage is the graphene follicle at this stage the primary oocyte completes its first meiotic division to produce the secondary oocyte and the first polar body and both of them are haploid that is n in number okay so you can see that this is the mitosis which is happening in childhood each month from puberty to menopause this is the stage it's in 2n stage and then uh, you can see that uh, the meiosis 1 is completed by one primary oocyte each month and then it gives the one polar body and the one n the secondary oocyte is surrounded by the granulosa cells and uh, uh, ovulation occurs by the release of the secondary oocyte on the 14th day of a 28 day cycle so you can see here that uh, after every month the uh, the meiosis 1 is completed then it will uh, further if it meets the sperm then there is uh, meiosis 2 and then you have the another uh, uh, fertilized ovum here and another uh, polar body second polar body is released you can also see the cycle here the follicle development in the ovary so usually the primary oocyte is arrested at prophase 1 during birth at birth this is the phase and uh, the ovary is very inactive it stays inactive uh, then it grows during the puberty and uh, then once it is uh, starts releasing the the ovum or the ovulation occurs so that is when uh, the puberty is achieved so this is ovulatory secondary oocyte now the atritic follicles so what are they failure of the follicle to develop to ovulate and release an egg these are degenerative follicles which are replaced by fibrous tissue so this is how it looks these are atritic follicles now to know about corpus luteum and corpus albicans so corpus luteum is yellow in color whereas corpus albicans is white in color now what is the details about it let's see so after ovulation the walls of the empty follicle collapse to form a temporary endocrine gland and that is called as corpus luteum the granulosa cells increase in size and produce yellow color pigment which is called as granulosa lutein cells which secrete progesterone the theca lutein cells they secrete estrogen now if the ovum is fertilized it is called as corpus luteum of pregnancy and it survives for four to five months under the hcg influence that is human chorionic gonadotrophin influence if the ovum is not fertilized it is called as corpus luteum of menstruation it survives for only 10 to 12 days corpus albicans what is it it is a mass of fibrous tissue that replaces the degenerated corpus luteum 
now next we move on to uterus it has three layers which is called as perimetrium the outer serous layer which is simple squamous epithelium the myometrium has thick muscular layer 15 millimeters three layers are there inner and outer longitudinal and there is a middle circular it has smooth muscle fibers more blood vessels and lymphatics it's called as stratum vasculare and during pregnancy it undergoes hyperplasia and hypertrophy the endometrium is lined by inner mucosal lining layer here you can see this is the perimetrium with simple squamous epithelium this is the myometrium which has uh, three layers of inner and outer longitudinal and middle circular layer it's, it's, it's called stratum vasculare and this is the layer which undergoes uh, changes during pregnancy then you have the endometrium here the whole endometrium we are going to see in detail which is the inner mucosal layer this is the lumen of the uterus here So endometrium of the uterus, the lining epithelium is simple columnar epithelium with connective tissue. So the lamina propria has blood vessels and the uterine glands are coiled in the deep surface. So there are two layers for this endometrium. First is called as superficial stratum functionalis, which is about two third and it's supplied by coiled or spiral arteries. The second layer is deep stratum basalis which is one third and is supplied by straight basal arteries so let's see a diagram of the the uterus the uterus is supplied by the uterine artery and then the uterine artery gives arcuate artery from the arcuate artery you can see blood vessels entry so this is a part of the deep stratum basalis which is one third of the uh, endometrium of the uterus and here the blood vessels are uh, straight or they are basal arteries they are called straight or they are basal arteries then as they go to the superficial surface okay this is called as stratum superficium which is about two-third if you see this is two-third and here the blood vessels become more coiled in nature that's why it's called coiled or spiral arteries now this is a picture of the uh, uterine glands so here you can see the uterine glands are straight in the superficial surface whereas in the deep surface they are more coiled now what is the significance of these of stratum functionalis it shows cyclical structural changes in response to hormones it prepares the uterus for implantation and embryo nourishment if no implantation occurs it's the functional layer is shed now the structure of the endometrium changes during the three phases of menstrual cycle so there are three phases one is called as a menstrual phase then you have proliferative or follicular phase then you have the secretory or the luteal phase so this is a normal menstrual cycle about 28 day cycle so about one to uh, seven days five to seven days is considered as the menstrual phase the first first days then from here till the uh, 14th day 14th day is the day of ovulation so till there it is called as the proliferative phase the one which you see here and then after the ovulation this phase is called as the secretory phase so we can see here in the diagram that the the fun menstrual phase has very less blood vessels and then because there is shedding of the functional layer of the endometrium then in the proliferative phase slowly the blood vessels are starting to grow and they have to start to reach the superficial surface they do not reach yet and even the glands are less coiled and not filled with secretions what happens in the later phase or the secretory luteal phase is that the blood vessels they reach the superficial surface and the glands are more coiled and they're filled with lots of secretion so the difference between proliferative phase and secretory phase the thickness of the endometrium here it's two to four millimeter in secretory phase it's four to six millimeter the lining epithelium is called as simple columnar epithelium and here it's called as hypertrophied columnar epithelium the uterine glands they are very few simple straight 
tubular glands with narrow lumen and there is no synthesis and storage of glycogen by the glandular epithelium and there is no secretory material in the proliferative phase. Whereas in the secretory phase, there is synthesis and storage of glycogen. In the basal part, the lumen is filled with secretion rich in glycogen and glycoprotein. The parenchyma versus stroma ratio, here it's 1 is to 1, whereas here in secretory it is 2 is to 1. The stroma is highly cellular and non-edematous. The cells are without any cytoplasm. Here it is in the secretory phase, it's highly vascular and it is edematous. The mitotic figures show more in the proliferative phase, whereas it is less in the secretory phase. Spiral arteries do not reach the superficial part of the endometrium and they are less coiled. In the secretory phase, they reach the superficial part and they are more coiled. So in the proliferative phase, during the proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle, the glands appear straight and embedded in a very loose connective tissue. So you can see that these are the glands and they are quite in the loose connective tissue. This is the lumen here. This is the secretory phase. During the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle, the arteries are more coiled, as you see here, and uterine glands are more tortuous. Uh, they give a sawtooth appearance, as shown here. The carpenter uses this. This is called as a sawtooth appearance. And their lumen is filled with secretions. So how, what is the evidence for having these secretions? It is subnuclear, supranuclear, or intraluminal vacuoles which are seen. Now going to the cervix of the uterus, as you, as you can see here in the diagram, this is the fundus of the uterus, this is the body of the uterus and this part is called as the cervix of the uterus. The internal os is the opening of the cavity of the uterus with the cavity of the cervical canal and the external os is the opening of the cervical canal with the cavity of the vagina. So, the cavity of the cervix or the cervical canal opens in the uterine cavity called internal os and it opens into the vagina called as external os. Now, there is two terms called as ectocervix and endocervix which you need to understand. So, the extent from the internal os to the external os within the cervical canal is called as endocervix, is inside the cervix. And at the level of external os, from here outside towards the vagina okay there's a part of the cervix is called as ectocervix this part of the vagina sorry this part of the cervix is called as ectocervix which is extending after the external os so at the external os the simple columnar epithelium lining of the cervical canal so cervical canal is lined by simple columnar epithelium it's continuous with the lining of the uterine cavity Okay, so we just finished with the uterine cavity or the endometrial ca endometrium. The inner lining is simple columnar epithelium. The same will extend into the endocervix. Endocervix. Now, at the external loss, this simple columnar epithelium will change. Okay, it changes to stratified squamous epithelium. It changes to stratified squamous epithelium. Now, the stratified squamous epithelium is the same epithelium of the vagina. So the vaginal part of the cervix surrounded by the vaginal fornix covered with stratified squamous epithelium can be seen. So here the endocervix continuation with the uterus uterine cavity so it's called so it has simple columnar epithelium and here the uh, ectocervix which is in continuation with the vagina will have stratified squamous epithelium. It's very very important to know this. There's another anatomical uh, classification we do. It's called supravaginal portion of the cervix which is above the vagina. It's called a supravaginal part and then we, the part of the cervix which is inside the vagina is called as vaginal portion of the cervix. It is not uh, similar to endocervix and ectocervix. Okay, let's come to cervicovaginal junction. So, the ectocervix is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, which is similar to vagina. As you can see here, this is the uh, stratified squamous epithelium. Okay. Then, when you go inside, you can see a simple columnar epithelium layer over here, simple columnar epithelium. So, that is the endocervix. 
the column of epithelium which is similar to the endometrium of the uterus. Now you can see at the level of the ectocervix there is a change. There is a change and this change is called as transformation zone. The transformation occurs from simple columnar epithelium from the endocervix to the stratified squamous epithelium of the ectocervix. This change is very important. So here there is chances of metaplasia whenever there is a change of epithelium. There is chances of metaplasia and uh, commonly we do a procedure which is called as pap smear. Uh, a swab is taken from this region and um, uh, smeared onto the slide and then further studied whether there's any changes. So here you can see the, uter uh, the uterus in uh, coronal section and you can see that these are the two lateral cornices over here. And this is the uh, this is a cytal section in which you can see uh, this is the short uh, anterior uh, vaginal wall and this is the uh, long posterior vaginal wall, anterior fornix and this is the posterior fornix. So this part is called as the ectocervix here and inside will be called as endocervix. So the vagina is made up of three layers, mucosa, it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. As you can see here, this is the mucosa, stratified squamous epithelium, lamina propria. Then the muscle layer, it is inner circular, outer longitudinal, which, are, which is shown here. And then you have adventitia, which is connective tissue layer. This is a wonderful uh, diagram to see all the changes happening uh, in, the, in the female uh, reproductive system at the same time. So the uterus, you, as we just said that there is a, this is the menstrual phase in which the stratum functionalis is uh, shed and this is the stratum basal has to remain. Then uh, there is low progesterone level here due to, due to the shedding of the stratum functionalis. Then you can see in the proliferative phase slowly the uh, increase in estrogen levels causes the functional layer to develop. And glands are straight or moderately coiled, which is happening here. This is the time for ovulation. And then you have the uh, secretory phase. In the secretory phase, the progesterone levels maintain the functionalis and cause glands to become highly coiled and secretory. And then, then it goes back to menstrual phase. So let's see what's happening in the ovary. The in the ovary, the same time, the primordial follicle uh, is changing to primary, secondary and graphene follicle and then the ovulation occurs and after that it changes to corpus luteum and further corpus albicans. Now what are the hormones which are acting here? So there are four hormones responsible. So because we have a low estrogen level that's the dark blue, it stimulates the FSH release that is, that is follicle stimulating hormone release from the pituitary gland. This promotes development of the primary follicles and changes to secondary follicles. So FSH is released and that promotes the increase of estrogen. Now estrogen is also released by the secondary follicle. That's why the estrogen level is being raised. So estrogen is produced by the secondary follicles. Levels rise until they reach the threshold that it surges, that in, initiates a surge in LH, that is luteinizing hormone. So once the estrogen is going up, you will see that the, the LH, that is the luteinizing hormone, which was at the baseline, it slowly, it gives a surge. Okay, there is, a, there is an increase in this level. And then, uh, the estrogen also further uh, drops, okay, in the luteal phase. And there is a small increase, but not very significant when you complete, compare with progesterone. Further LH again goes back to the baseline. Now what about FSH? Also there is a peak here and then it again goes back. What happens to progesterone? The progesterone is, is uh, very low in the menstrual phase and proliferative phase whereas it increases in the luteal phase. Okay, why? Because progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum. Okay, so corpus luteum produces it. And that's why we just studied that there is two types of corpus luteum. One is corpus luteum of pregnancy which stays for four to five months. Another one is called corpus luteum of menstruation, which stays for 10 to 12 days. Okay. And once the level of progesterone drops, and that's when the menstruation happens. Okay. So, uh, in sometimes you can see that uh, females who would like to 
delay their menstruation they take progesterone only pills uh, to extend uh, extend uh, this period and to delay their uh, menstruation cycle coming to fallopian tube uh, or the uterine tube it has three coats one is the mucosa it has two cells two types of cells ciliated columnar and non ciliated peg or secretory cells the second layer is called muscle layer inner circular and outer longitudinal and the third is called serosa that is peritoneum with connective tissue so the first is mucosa two types of cells are here you have the ciliated cells where you can see all this with with cilia here cilia and then these are the peg cells which you are seeing uh, which is non ciliated we don't have any cilia over here so the fallopian tubes have two types of epithelium as we just discussed the non ciliated peg cells which has no cilia they are secretory in nature it has nutritive and protective for the oocyte and also helps in capacitation of the sperm then the ciliated cells the cilia will beat towards the uterus okay as you can see that the, the reason why we have these cilia it, it allows the direction of the ovum towards the uterus and this is how it's seen under electron microscope now how does the oocyte move towards the uterus it is due to the peristaltic contraction then the ciliary activity and there is a lot of fluid over here they all help in movement of the oocyte or the zygote towards the uterus now let's do a sample question which of the following is a feature of the secretory phase of the endometrium of the uterus is it straight tubular glands with narrow lumen lumen filled with secretion mitotic figures are more blood vessels do not reach the superficial part of the endometrium so please take a minute to recollect what uh, or put a pause uh, and try to uh, mark the right answer so the answer is the lumen is filled with secretion okay all the other features are related to the proliferative phase of the endometrium of the uterus next question which of the following epithelium is seen in the pointed area you can see that this is the pointed area which is shown which epithelium is here is it simple squamous simple columnar stratified squamous or transitional epithelium so you can see these cells which it is looking like a single layer and nucleus is towards the base oval in shape it, it is a, it is the simple columnar epithelium which is a part of the endo cervix endo cervix and this is the ecto cervix which has stratified squamous epithelium so kindly study well for your exams thank you all for your patient listening hope you've benefited